Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So today I'm in this 2007 Ford Focus C-Max 1.8 TDCI. And the problem with this car is that it's slightly, uh, well actually a bit more than slightly, I, I would say it's low on power. I suppose the reason I use the word slightly is because there isn't sort of something, it's not sort of low in power in the sense of it being in limp mode um, uh, or anything like that. Uh, as you can see the the engine is running there's the engine management light isn't on so it's it's not in limp mode uh it drives kind of normally you can drive it about but it's definitely low on power it's kind of most noticeable i would say like if you're in third gear and you're doing like flat out acceleration you're looking at the revs um it it, it it accelerates very very slowly like that it, they're definitely slower than what you would expect uh i've got the um think diag uh plugged in there in the obd port and uh i had a look um like, like i said already the engine management wasn't on so i wasn't expecting to see any 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 diagnostic codes and sure enough there wasn't <coughs> excuse me uh but i'm i just pulled up some live data on it uh, and it, and I, I'm using the Think Diagonal OBD2 2 mode, by the way. But I, I actually did it in in uh, in the manufacturer mode as well, and and, and, the, and I noticed the same thing. Uh, maybe if I go close up, you might notice as well. Uh, unfortunately, once again, like I commented before, yes, the readings are in degrees Fahrenheit. Very irritating that the Think Diag does this. I don't know why. Uh, I I have not been able to figure out how to change the settings. Uh, but um, if we look at the intake air temperature, as you can see, it's showing 220 odd degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and forget about the conversion to degrees Celsius, just compare it to the coolant temperature. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, there's no reason why the, you know, why the intake air temperature should be that high. I'm pretty sure that's reading incorrectly. Now, could that be causing uh, the engine to have low power? Uh, I would say yes, absolutely, because obviously, hot hotter air is less than dense than cooler air you know that's how hot air balloons work for example so if the engine computer thinks that the air going into the engine is hotter than it is it's gonna inject correspondingly less fuel so yeah that absolutely could cause um a, lo a low power complaint like we've got here so that's what i suspect is wrong with this car uh, now today it's raining at the moment uh, so I'm probably going to break off the video uh, today uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back tomorrow morning uh, before I do anything else I'm just at the moment the engine is at operating temperature before I do anything else tomorrow morning I'm just going to redo this um, you know redo looking at this live data and see what see what the intake air temperature is showing then I've got I mean, e either way, this is wrong what it's showing uh, uh, today anyway, but I, I, just out of curiosity, I'm just going to see what it's showing uh, tomorrow morning with the engine cold. Uh, and then from then, obviously, with the better weather as, as well, I, I'm, I'm hoping for dry weather tomorrow, uh, we'll, we'll have a look under the bonnet and, uh, and see if we can uh, go about uh, trying to fix this. Right, so it's the next morning, and I'm back in back in this uh, Ford Focus C Max. Uh, engine is completely cold, as you can see. Um, ignition is on. You can see where the uh, coolant gauge is reading there, and uh, I've got the uh, Think Diag uh, plugged in again. Um, by the way, um, uh, a couple of months ago they did do an update on the interface, and <clears throat> I thought I'd just have another go at go to see if i can change the uh the units from imperial to metric and now i have actually managed to do that with the uh with the new interface <coughs> don't get me wrong it's still not a very good interface there's still stuff on there that doesn't make sense you know you, you can't really easily understand what's going on with some of the uh 
the stuff that's presented to you on there is, 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 is not a good interface. But um, at least after two years of, of, <laughs> of having the thing, I have got metric units <laughs> in the end. So that's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyway, so like, like I said, the, the engine is completely cold. You can see that the coolant temperature is reading 8 degrees Celsius, but the intake air temperature, uh, 88 degrees Celsius. So obviously that, that's not wrong. Uh, so that, that's not right is what I mean. Um, so I think just for the time being, I'm not even going to start the engine. Um, I'm, let's get under the bonnet and have a look what's going on under the bonnet. Okay, so we're under the bonnet. Um, the <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the intake air temperature sensor on these is incorporated into the math sensor here, the mass airflow sensor. So initially, I'm just going to start by unplugging it and see what happens to the to the values on there. Uh, I'm guessing you can't see that very clearly at the moment. What what I'll do is let me do it, and then I'll then I'll pull the phone up for a close up. So let's see if we can get these get this unplugged. Not quite sure how these how these connectors work. I'm probably sure you got it. Alright, oh, okay, I got it. Ah, okay. Cool. So uh as you can see, let me or as I can see. Can you see it's gone to minus 40? Now that's what we would expect to see on an open circuit, which is which is now what that is. Uh, so that makes me think that the wiring and everything to here is good because that that that's you know that that change in, in reading is is what we would expect to see. Uh, if, if there was a break in the wire or, or some other short to somewhere going on that wouldn't be doing that in in that manner so that makes me think that yes the the intake air temperature sensor element within this math sensor must definitely be faulty is what I'm thinking at the moment um, I, I can see that this um, uh, this math sensor has probably been removed previously at some point and maybe it hasn't been quite put on correctly. I, I can see this gap, so uh, maybe you got some of you guys have spotted that as well. Uh, obviously, I will correct that, but I, I don't think, well, I, I'm sure that's not going to be affecting the intake air temperatures uh, reading, so that that's not going to be our problem. Uh, I think we have we have already found the problem. It's obviously... Um, like I said, the the intake air temperature sensor elements within that uh, math sensor. So uh, what should I do? I think I'll probably sort of take it off and, and, and have a look at it, uh, see if we can make any progress from there. So let me do that um, with the phone not in my way and I'll come back to you guys in a sec. Okay, so this is the math removed. Um, there's nothing obviously wrong with this. It's not dirty or anything obviously broken or anything. Uh, in fact, it looks relatively um, newish, I would say. I think it's probably been replaced. Uh, I think it has been replaced with a non-genuine uh, non one. It kind of looks like it's probably non-genuine. Could well be why it failed. Now, I'm not particularly worried about the powers and grounds. Uh, two reasons. One is because, uh, like I said earlier, that this incorp well, I called it a math earlier. So this is the combined intake air temperature sensor and mass airflow sensor, and obviously the mass airflow sensor works. <coughs> and, and I do believe that the um, the power power and powers and grounds are shared, and also because of the way the the scan data reacted when we unplugged it. I'm I'm not concerned about the uh, about a power ground or wiring issue to be honest, but just in case, I think I probably will put it back on and just check those anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's probably just going to be a case of replacing this. Okay, so I got this uh, voltmeter set up here, uh, connected to a battery ground, uh, just just up there. 
Uh, so normally the better way to check uh, powers and grounds would be, of, would be with the uh, connector plugged in because that way the circuit's going to be loaded. But as you can see on this connector, uh, these uh, where these wires go into the uh, go into the connector is it's really tight. So yeah, I could back probe those if I really had to. But seeing as I don't really suspect a power and ground issue, any I don't want to risk damaging the you know the weather packing and stuff by by sort of stuffing anything in there. So I, I, I'm just gonna <coughs> excuse me. I'm just gonna do the test with the uh, with the connector unplugged basically from the front so uh th this is a four pin sensor by the way so assuming that that is the the correct sensor on there or, or the correct pin layout anyway these outer terminals shouldn't be doing anything so what are what i'm expecting to find on the inner four terminals i'm expecting to find one one battery one earth um wherever they may be and then two in between which which will be the sing signal wires so let's start with this uh with the second one you know up as we're looking at it what have we got there so that's five volts so that's that's going to be one of the signal wires i imagine let's check the next one 12 volts so that's going to be the, your power uh, that's the uh, third one up as we're looking at it uh that one is that our ground it's not That one doesn't appear to have anything on it at all. That one is showing five volts again. So is this our ground? Yes, it's showing zero, but is that showing zero because it's a good ground or or is it is it actually an open? Because hmm. Because normally on, on a ground, you do tend to see like just like a tiny little bit of voltage. The fact that that's just showing zero and not moving as we make contact onto it is making me suspect it a little bit, I have to be honest. So um, maybe I'm going to run a test light to that uh, just to double check it. So let's remember, so that was the uh, uh, 654, that was the fourth one up. Uh, which is the uh, brown kind of looking wire so that does look the right color for a ground but I am, I am just a bit concerned that it's, that reading isn't showing anything at all by the way quick note as, as I hope you noticed I, I wasn't shoving this all the way into here I mean that, to be honest I could because what I've got on the end of there which is actually a, a paper clip it would probably be about the right size as 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 a, as a terminal anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But uh, generally speaking, what, when you're front probing a, a connector, be careful not to sort of shove anything that's too big in there, because that way you're going to spread these terminals, and then you know you're going to have pin fit issues. But actually, but given that this is the right size, I probably could put it in there a bit further. Let's try that. No, that's. Okay, I'm a, I'm a little bit suspect there, so let me get a grab a test light. Okay, so I've just got that plugged into uh, pin three, the, uh, the, 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 you know, what we've already tested as the power, the 12 volt side net, and then I've got, I've, I'm going to touch the other end of the test light onto what we hope is our ground. And actually, yes, it lights. So that means that was a good ground. I was, of course, doing those uh, checks with the ignition on, as you can see. I guess I'm probably going a bit further with this testing than we need to really, but uh, I did manage to find a bit of um, a bit of spec on this um, <coughs> on uh, what resistance um, there should be on the um, intake air temperature circuit. Uh, so assuming the spec, the spec I found is correct, uh, the resistance between uh, across um, uh, terminals two to four. Uh, on this on the sensor at 12 degrees celsius should be 54 kilo ohms uh, temperature today is a little bit hotter than 12 degrees but actually not much it's probably about 15 16 something like that so that's lucky uh, so let's in fact uh, test to see uh, what resistance we actually have um, so i'm going to try and do this 
So I think that's pin two there. And if I make contact with pin four, oops. Right, can you see that on the display? Is that coming up? It is, isn't it? Oops, hang on. What have I done? Oops. Right, so that's 2.7 kilo ohms. So definitely a lot less than 54. Uh, and given that that, um, uh, that circuit in there is... I, I think that the, the math circuit is actually a, like a d digital sort of square wave, but if, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think the the intake air temperature sensor circuit is probably just a simple kind of like um, negative temperature coefficient thermos, thermistor circuit. So assuming that is the case, uh, a lower a lower resistance would certainly coincide with a higher temperature, which is exactly what we're seeing. So yeah, that's good. I mean, not not that we needed to do that last test, really. I don't think, but I, I think that that's the you know that that's as much proof as as, as we need. Uh, we definitely need to replace this. Right. So some of you, I'm sure, will be familiar with the concept of the uh, unplug it test. Oops. And the idea with that is you. Um, you unplug whatever sensor or whatever you think is faulty and if the car drives better that confirms that yes indeed that sensor was faulty now i really don't think it is a very good test at all because let's say you do that and the car does drive better it could be driving better because yes indeed that thing that you unplugged was faulty or it could just be because the default values that the computer is now using <clears throat> just just correspond better with whatever other fault there is so it's an almost pointless test really because it's completely inconclusive but nonetheless just purely out of curiosity i am indeed doing the unplug it test right now so uh i don't i've got no idea how well the shot is coming out or not uh, I don't do many of these driving along shots, but um, I think you can see enough to tell that I'm driving along. And I just want to compare how the car drives with that uh, with that MAF dash intake air temperature sensor unplugged. Oh, I would say it drives better. like to be able to accelerate in third gear that was second then it's most noticeable in third like I mentioned before let's see if we can drive down here let this truck go on a little bit and do a third gear test so accelerate a little bit in second Third. Yeah, I need more road really, but oh yeah, that <laughs> that definitely feels quicker. <laughs> I mean, I, I I'd like to have more road to be able to accelerate a bit more, but I don't need to actually. That that def that car definitely feels quicker. <laughs> feels like a different car, in fact. Okay, well, I, I, th I think we've flogged the testing to death a little bit, but um, sometimes it's just interesting to kind of try different uh, methods of testing, I think, and just kind of reinforce the, uh, the diag diagnosis, as it were. Uh, I like doing that, and hopefully, I'm hoping it's been interesting for you guys watching as well, but I think for the time being, I am going to stop filming, and then... Uh, get a replacement sensor, uh, get it on there, and hopefully confirm the fix. I was just thinking, uh, interesting to note that no engine management light has come on yet, <laughs> and that's despite the fact that the uh, that sensor is completely unplugged, uh, but I'm guessing it probably needs to go for a few, uh, few drive cycles before it actually comes on. 
but anyway inter interesting to note that nothing has come on straight away okay so this is not about trying to diagnose the problem anymore this is this is just uh, stuff that you know I, I find interesting to look at sometimes and hopefully uh, you guys might find it interesting or sort of education etc so um, I'm in an OBD mode at the moment with that sensor still unplugged uh, and as we can see we as earlier we can see the intake air temperature at minus 40 degrees C which corresponds to open circuit on that uh, on that temp on that thermistor circuit and we got the uh, <coughs> the air the airflow from the from the mass airflow part of that sensor showing zero grams per second because it's obviously unplugged so th these are the actual values uh, and in OBD mode you, as far as I know you always see the actual values now uh, as, a, as a bit of interest, I'm, I'm going to stop filming just to, not to make the video too long, but I'm going to come out of OBD mode. I'm going to go back in, in the manufacturer specific mode. Now, in the manufacturer specific mode, I think we're going to see the substituted values. We may or we may not. On some cars you do, on some cars you, you don't. But I'm just trying it out of curiosity and uh, I, th I thought I'd film it. So, I'm, so uh, let me do that now and come back on the next shot. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, so take my word for it the, that that sensor is still definitely unplugged. Uh, but uh, I've just uh, come back in on the, uh, on, the, on the manufacturer specific mode. And as you can see, we, we've got a mass airflow reading and an intake air temperature reading there as well and you know that that mass airflow uh, will react when i rev the engine up as you can see and uh, that is definitely with that sensor unplugged uh, so this is interesting and it's worth knowing because uh, if you're not familiar with this concept of substituted values uh, you know, you could, you know, you could make a mistake in your diagnostic th diagnostics. You could sort of be looking at something and thinking, "Well, that looks all right. That seems to be working. That sensor must be okay." Uh, not necessarily. You could be looking at the substituted value. Like I said, as far as I'm aware, um, in OBD mode, there is there are no substituted values. So actually, for for, for a lot of your um, fault diagnostics, you're you're better off starting probably in OBD mode. Uh, and going from there because at least uh, you're you're looking at you know actually what the sensor is or isn't doing rather than what is often in the manufacturer mode a uh, a substituted value okay so i've got the replacement part here uh, this is a second hand original ford part that i got off ebay i paid 25 pounds for it delivered uh, yes you can get cheaper aftermarket parts but as I've mentioned before in some of my previous videos, unfortunately the quality of aftermarket parts is generally so poor that I tend not to buy them unless I absolutely have to. Um, so yeah, so I, I went for a second hand one off of eBay in this case. I did actually call the main agent, the Ford dealer for a price off them as well because again, as I've mentioned, I think once or twice in, in one or two of my previous videos, sometimes parts from main dealers, the, the original OEM part from the main dealer can be cheaper than what you might think. Not, not, not usually, obviously, but sometimes. So it's usually worth checking for the sake of a phone call. In this case, uh, the part at the Ford garage was actually discontinued. Uh, so I didn't get a price off them, but uh, they kind of helped me in a way because when I'm generally speaking with with most main dealers If they've discontinued the part they will give you the part number so you can shop for a second-hand one uh, And indeed uh, the Ford dealer I suppose it was good enough to give me the part number and so I bought this using the part number they gave me which interestingly is different from the part number that that's on the that's on the one that's on the car so i don't know if that's something significant or not it might it may be it might not be uh but uh i am glad that i ended up doing doing it this way because you know hopefully I, i've definitely got the right part uh and hopefully you know i'm hoping it's all in good nice working order and it should fix our problem which we will find out sure enough soon enough i mean okay so the new sensor is fitted uh i've got 
the uh, the uh, thing diag uh, connected up in OBD2 mode. So we are looking at the actual data uh, and I'm pleased to say that it's looking good so far. Uh, engine is cold, I haven't started it yet, but uh, you know, we got, we're showing 28 uh, degrees C uh, on the intake air temperature, which um, I would say is, is about right because yeah, even though the engine is cold, it's actually quite quite sort of a, a hot day today. So that um, that looks about right. You know, we got 13 showing on the on the engine coolant. So let's start it up. Starts right up. That's what the uh, gauges are showing on there. Oh, interestingly, look at that intake air temperature has gone down a little bit now because I suppose it before it was just like the the, the 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 still air getting hot inside that air box, and now that obviously the air is moving through, it's gone down. Uh, so yeah, I'm liking that. Um, interestingly, the the the. The airflow reading as well from that mass airflow sensor is looking a little bit higher than it was on the other one. So maybe that, that other one could have been reporting the actual airflow a bit low as well, that's possible. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm convinced this is gonna fix the problem, but obviously um, let's go for a test drive just to confirm. I guess I'm just uh, pulling up onto a, a local bit of motorway by me just to do that um, third gear acceleration test again. Um, the the previous location I did it in, in you know in one of the previous shots. So, you know that that obviously wasn't ideal, guys, from a from a health and safety point of view. But anyway, here we go. I want to go um, full full throttle in third gear. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's where it was most noticeable before that that three to four thousand um, range of acceleration. Uh, before it was probably doing it, um, you know, not not even half as fast as that. I mean, it, it almost it, we would almost feel like it was going to stop accelerating. So yeah, that's that's definitely a fix. Uh, I'm pleased about that. Um, yeah, what, what I was saying about when I did the test earlier, uh, really from a health and safety point of view, that wasn't ideal. Uh, I mean, I don't think it was dangerous or anything, but it, it wasn't ideal. So obviously, guys, you know, safety first and all that, you know, to take your time. Get, 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 if, if you need to do a t bit of testing that involves, you know, you having to accelerate, take, take your time, get, get onto a bit of motorway or dual carriageway or whatever. Uh, you know, don't do anything dangerous is the moral of what I'm saying there. But anyway, this is fixed. Uh, as always, I hope you found the video interesting, useful. Um, obviously, th this was on a particular car, but really uh, all cars or all internal combustion engine cars have uh, an air intake sensor somewhere. It might not be incorporated into the mass airflow, it might be separate. But it doesn't matter whether it's uh, petrol, diesel, turbo, non-turbo. You know they will all, all have an in air intake uh, temperature sensor, uh, and that reading will obviously affect the the fueling of, of the car. So in terms of the principles of you know even when there's something wrong with the car, but even when there's no uh, fault code to go by, just looking at all your live data. Uh, seeing if anything doesn't seem seem right, and you know, and going from there, you know that that, that I hope is all kind of like useful stuff uh, for you guys to know. And um, and also, yeah, uh, if you're using the kind of a uh, scan tool, which uh, gives you access to manufacturer specific uh, software, uh, like for example that that Think Diag be aware of substituted values because imagine uh, going through that same same test in, in, in the manufacturer, um, manufacturer specific mode and not being aware of substituted values you know you, you would not have been able to do that same diagnostic you know because the 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 substituted um, um, intake air temperature reading would, would have looked relatively plausible so yeah um, I suppose maybe one of the most important um, 
uh, things from this video, which actually I don't think I've ever touched on on any of my f previous videos, is yes, when you're using manufacturer-specific software, uh, be aware and wary of substituted values. And just as I've said, recap, well, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but uh, as far as I'm aware, OBD, uh, OBD2 data, OBD data always has to give you the uh, the actual reading from the sensor. I, I, I believe that's part of the, you know, the, the, the agreements with the, um, with the, uh, the governments and, and stuff that the manufacturers have, um, have arrived at because it's, I think it's all to do with like emissions legislation, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, uh, a bit, bit of a long with you, I suppose. I don't know, I, quite a few different clips. So uh, I know I've gone on in some of those clips. It's probably going to add up a little bit. But anyway, as I say, um, hope you found it interesting and useful. Uh, and I'm closing off here. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.